Hi, this is Bill Papoon, Managing Consultant at Construction Science. I've been asked several times lately about printing out notebook comments. For those of you who've played with this before, you know that notebook topics are a great way of storing information about activities, things like assumptions, whether or not the activity is being impacted by a change order, that sort of thing. Back in the P3 days, we called this the log, but it has a very similar purpose. The problem is P6 does not make it easy to display these topics. So I'll show you a couple of options. First, let's recap. Under the activity details, you'll find the tab for notebook. Now I'm using version 8.1, so we click on Add and it brings up a list of topics. There's about 20 of them that are standard, and it's possible to even customize these. So normally you'll go in and you'll select one of these, like anticipated problems. <clears throat> then the next step is that we have to type in whatever comment we want to make under that category. Now if you're using an older version of Primavera, you can just start typing right here by putting your cursor on the right side of the screen. Starting with version 8.0, we have to click on the Modify tab, and then we can type. And there we go. We can certainly have more than one type of topic for each activity. I can repeat the process, click on Add, and pick something else, like this, current status. And you'll notice that the right side goes blank, meaning we have another opportunity here to type some comments. So it's like a notebook. You just flip to another page, and you start some new comments. Now, how are we going to display this information? Well, right now, I'm displaying some of it on my Gantt chart, as you can probably tell. This is what we call a label. Let's look at some of the other labels up here. You'll see that I've got labels that repeat the description of the activity, dates associated with the activity, and these are notebook topics. Now, notebook topics are a very special type of label because we have to create this box. Notice that my cursor is showing a box here. You don't see that on the other ones. To create this box, we right-click inside the Gantt chart, and we go to Bar Chart Options. Under Bar Chart Options, you'll see this right here, under General. The width and the height of your text box. Now, you can make the box quite tall so that you can wrap the text, but when you wrap the text, as we can see right here, it's going to make your row much taller. So you're going to be wasting a lot of space to show the comment being wrapped. If there's room on your Gantt chart, it's preferable just to make the box wider and wider. So if we try this, maybe take it from 400 to something like 500, and let's see if these fit. Well, that one certainly fits. And here's a few others that fit. But now we're getting cut off a bit. You can see right here, I've got one that's a little hard to read. In fact, let me shrink this down for you just a little bit. You can see the word paving being cut off. So to make room for this, either I make the box taller or just make it a little bit wider again. But there is a third option. Just make the font smaller. In fact, I would encourage you to make the font smaller if you're going to try to print it on a Gantt chart. So let's come down here for this comment. Let's highlight this activity. And here's the comment. Let's click on Modify. Let's highlight all that text and make it as small as possible. And you can see that helps a bit, but it's still wrapping. So some of these, we may not be able to get around it, even when we're making the font smaller. And I might have to come back in, in those instances, and do the trade-off of a taller box so that I can wrap the text and make it fit. So you can see now that a lot of these are going to fit much better. This one, the font's still a bit larger. 
but this one's starting to work. So again, that's an option. But when we select this as a label, we can only really do one topic at a time. Just trying to fit one topic up here on the Gantt chart is enough of a challenge. Let's go look at our labels. Right click, bars. This is where you set up those labels, for example, on the green bars, which are planned work, non-critical. We go to labels, and you see that I'm showing notebook basis and assumptions, only one topic. If you're going to fit it on your Gantt chart, you really have to limit yourself to one topic, which could be a problem because that means we have to set up another layout to show some other topics. So what happens if we want to show all the topics just at the same time? Not very practical unless you store all of them under a single category. In other words, you store all of your comments under a single topic, and then you select that as your label. But it does get a bit crowded up here. So let's look at another option that I think is a lot better. If you're not familiar with reports, you come over here to the directory, click on reports, and you're going to see one that's called notebook topics. Usually it's a standard one that's already there. I wouldn't encourage you to try to use this one. It's not really going to do what you're expecting. It's only going to show you all the topics that you've set up for this particular project. So what we're going to do is go click on this plus sign and add a new report. I am not a big fan of the reports in P6 because if you make a mistake, you basically have to create the whole report over again unless you're very careful. So I'm going to show you how to be careful and hopefully avoid that problem. Thankfully, the notebook topic one is an easy report. So let's start the process, click on Next, and there it is. That's the category we're looking for, notebook, activity notebook. There is such a thing as a project notebook, and that's stored in a different place. So let's go to the next screen. And you'll see that our subject area that we selected is simply Activity Notebook. In the next screen after that, we're selecting what columns we need. Thankfully, there's not a whole lot of columns to even worry about. So again, that's why this report is so easy. But I do want the Activity ID. I feel that's pretty important because otherwise you're only going to get the comments and the type of subject matter or topic but you won't even know which activity it's associated with. So this is going to make it a little bit better. Bring over the activity ID. But three columns, that should be enough. Let's look at the width, because we want to have enough room to show those topics. You saw what a struggle it was just to show it on the Gantt chart. So as you can imagine, I'm going to make this column very wide and shrink down the other ones as much as possible. So let's look at notebook description, 417. Let's try to make it a little bit wider, maybe 500. Notebook topic, which would be something like basis and assumptions. 160 is probably fine. And activity ID hopefully is a bit less than that, and yes, it's 100. That should be the, the, the uh, column that takes up the least amount of space. Let's go ahead and click OK. Let's look at group and sort. I don't necessarily need to show this grouped by the project. This is only one project for what I'm printing. So I could delete that one and just organize it by activity. Also, for the filter, we want to check that. In other words, if you did intend to show every single activity, let's make sure we're doing that, that we're not filtering anything out. One last thing, though, under group and sort is I should have checked the sort. Sometimes it's what I want but I do need to check it. So under sort, I can actually see it's blank. I'm going to do it by activity ID. That'll make it easy to look up my comments when I print this out. Let's click OK. Let's go to the next screen. And we need to give it a name. I'm going to use the default name that it started with. This was the subject matter activity notebook. You can see it's got a very similar description to the standard one but it's going to give us a whole bunch more information. Let's click on Next. Let's go ahead and run the report. And let's do a print preview. This has been important because we probably won't like the way it looks the first time, so we don't want to go ahead and print it just yet. And let's see. 
it's fitting somewhat well. And it's only five pages. Now, keep in mind, you only get activities listed if they've already got a notebook topic on them. Now, I've got a few activities here I can see. They have a topic assigned to them, but there's never been anything typed. So you can see that it's blank here. But we are getting the activity ID, the description for the activity, all the other useful information. And you'll notice, too, that if you put more than one topic on the same activity, it has to add a second line to fit that information in. Because after all, we have to have room for the description over on the right-hand side. Now this, too, is where making the font size smaller when you're setting up the topic will help you. I don't think all of mine are uniform right now, so we might see a few that are still getting cut off like this one right here. So you can see even with 500, I should have made the font size the smallest possible because it will still be readable. So I might go back in. First of all, let's make sure we're doing it landscape. We want to give ourselves as much room as possible. And you can see that I'm using letter size paper. Let's just close this out for a moment. Let's go backwards. And this is important because if I finalize and save this report, I won't be able to go back and modify any of my changes. I'll have to start over with a brand new report, and that's very frustrating. I'm going to go backwards to the columns, highlight this one for the description, and let's just try making it a bit wider. Now, there is a point where we might make it too wide, and it simply runs off the page. Now let's go back out to run the report. Let's look at our print preview. Looking a little bit better. But it looks like a few things are still getting cut off. So we have to watch this again. The font size is going to be a problem. And there is a point where if you're just simply typing very long paragraphs for your comments, it's going to work against you. Try to be brief. And if you can't be brief, split it up into more than one topic at least. Now one last thing I can do here under page setup is try something like fit it to one page across. That should help a little bit. And it's getting better. With a little bit of tweaking, this will be a perfect report. But the key here is don't stop until it fits exactly the way you want. To be honest, if I wanted this to be perfect, I would go back out to the project, highlight those activities where the font sizes are still a bit too large, and make them all a font 8. That's going to fit a lot better here, because you can see I only have two other columns. I've made them pretty narrow, and I'm still starting to run out of room over here. Even with some of these starting to wrap, there's a point where they get cut off. Now. Once you've got this to where you want it to be, you can go ahead and proceed to the next step and click on Save. Now it's saved, but again, keep in mind, if you weren't happy with it and there's anything you want to change about it, you won't be able to do it at this point. You'll literally have to go back and create another report. Still, this is the most powerful way of printing out my comments. And just before we wrap up, I want to show you something else back in the activity details. You might have noticed that under each one of these, there is a print button. This is actually not as practical as it sounds, because it's only going to print out the comment that's right here. It's not printing out anything else. So you do need the report to give you the full measure of all of the comments that you've been making. I hope you enjoyed this. If you found it beneficial, or if you'd like to discuss it, I'd encourage you to call me. We are professional trainers. I've been working with Primavera products now for 25 years. And you'll see that we have a couple of websites. PrimaveraScheduling.com is our website specifically for Primavera P6 training. And we also have other services that we provide at ConstructionScience.com. Again, thank you, and I hope to hear from you.